Hello everyone, this is Will. This is Alex. Welcome back to another episode of They Mostly Come Out at Night. Mostly. Uh, okay, well, we got, a, we got a good one, but I'm not excited about the next episode. But anyway, we'll get into that. Yeah, jump in the gun. I know. <laughs> let, me, let me dial it back a little bit. Before we get into anything, please go to our social medias, um, our... Facebook, uh, Instagram, wherever. YouTube, wherever. Just go follow us somewhere. If you like our podcast, we're on all the podcasting sites. If you do like, I mean, it's not video format. It's just the, the, the fucking poster. But like, if you like that kind of stuff, you like listening on YouTube, we do have a YouTube channel. Um, we take a lot of requests there. A lot of people like commenting on that. So go there, follow us if you like what you hear. Uh, we Especially, really... Uh... Especially if you got a request, because guess what? We're After this one, one of you lucky people is getting your request filled yes. after this episode. Yes. So enjoy that. Um, if you do like to like request things, um, we do look at all the comments, and we will add it. So it's every five episodes if you're new here. Um, if you're not, uh, thanks for listening. Um, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for everything you do. We appreciate you, and uh, yeah, let's get into the episode. All right. So, finally, we have... After it. Galaxy Invader. Oh, my God. Like, it's weird seeing, like, an actually well... A like, real movie? A real movie. Like, I wouldn't say this is, like, the most well-made movie I've ever seen, and there's a lot of mistakes here, but I was thoroughly entertained. It wasn't boring. It was, like, just a good time. It was fun. Um, and I love... So we, we got to see a movie with Sho Kasugi. Again. Um, again. So um, I do like seeing him. We also love ninjas, <clears throat> obviously. Yeah, and we just like lizard brain action shit. And that's what we got. So Pray for Death was the movie uh, that we watched tonight. And yeah, it was just like a good like time. It was just a good time. Like, is it the best fucking martial arts movie you'll ever see in your entire life? Hell no. Not even close. But it is fun. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just a quick synopsis of that. Um, now, let's get into the actual m- meat of the, of the movie. So it starts with, um, it gets right into it. So there's this, like... Um, yeah, once you get past the quick opening credits. Um... Yeah, so it, it, it's credits uh, with, like, Shokasugi and his son in the movie, like, flailing swords around. and Except for the theme song. Yeah, there is a theme song, which is actually a pretty good theme song. Look, look I, I, appreciate, uh, <clears throat> I appreciate the effort. It's, pro- it's a produced and, you know, it's well produced. It sounds good. Um, we found a Blu-ray rip of this. Uh, yes, I'm, I mean, this has... A Blu-ray rip somewhere. I mean, good luck finding it. We we had to dig a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not aware of any way to actually stream this movie in the U.S. That is. But uh, anyway, so after the credits, it shows a woman getting like kidnapped into a, a, a like a bunch like of, a, a Japanese uh, style house. But a bunch of ninjas are kidnapping her. Yeah, so we get a black ninja, and he comes out, and he like starts murdering all the fucking white ninjas and then he's you know fighting the main evil red ninja and he's just about to like win and uh it like pulls away and it's a movie and it's like the two like the two kids are watching uh the black ninja yeah and um it's shokasugi his wife and their two kids they're sitting down for dinner, and his wife is saying how they should be moving to America, and she really wants to move to America and thinks it'll be safer and better for the kids. They have more opportunities, and yeah. also because her dad was American. Yeah. Well, also, so he's like, he's apparently going to be promoted, but in three years. So, like, they would they have don't to wait that long. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, they're kind of. I guess it's supposed to show that they're struggling a little bit in Japan. So they decide to move to America. I mean, that's ultimately what happens, yeah. right? So, I mean, you can kind of tell where this is going. It's like, you ever see Death Wish? Yeah. Mm. Um, 
There's also a quick moment, quick scene, because you have to do this, where they're in like a dojo, and there's like an older kid, and he fights a younger kid, and he beats him up, and then the guy is like, they're all talking Japanese, but the guy is basically like, okay, who's next? Who wants to take him on? And Sho Kasugi's son raises his hand and kicks the fucking, like mops the floor with this kid. Because you gotta have it. And so <clears throat> they decide to move to America, like does the typical like airplane landing. And they're going into this like restaurant. It's like an old restaurant that this guy is selling. Um, and they're going to like clean it up and it's going to be like his Japanese restaurant. It's then kind of like a like a questionable neighborhood. Because before that, like he was saying, like when they're talking about his promotion, possible promotion, he's like, well, what if... Uh... What if I don't bother? What if I make my own business? Yeah. And I'm my own boss. Well, and she's like, yes, I agree. That sounds like a good idea because I know you can make it. Yeah. And so they do, they move to America and like, uh, we see them like run into some like CD characters in the beginning. There's like a homeless man. Two and, homeless like, men. Like a gang walks by them and then they run into one of the people and he's like watch where you're walking oh before this because they flash back during this um oh i'm sorry yeah we forgot like this is like gives a hint on like he's a ninja his backstory because basically yeah. like when he was uh, he's at like this i guess ninja temple and we get a flashback of where someone attacks someone stealing some stuff from the temple and he fights them and he's like stop and he fights him with a torch and it's like you know, the guy has a sword, he throws it, it like sticks into one of the posts, and then they have a fight, they fight more, and um, Sho gets stabbed in the leg, and he like pushes the guy around and like stabs him on the sword. And then, um, but he finds out it's his brother. Well, and he feels really guilty yeah. for killing his brother. And so it like flashes back, and the... <laughs> and then again, because we... It's funny because there's no real reason for this, but we needed a fight scene because it's an action movie. So we get young, young old man. We get a young old man again who and, uh, fights um, Shokusugi, and they fight. They have a, a quick tussle. His name is Akira in the movie. Yes. Sorry, I guess we should reference. <clears throat> His name is Akira. So, um, so they fight. Uh, and the old man's like, well, like, I know whatever decision you'll make is the right one, but you need to let go of the past. Yeah. Like, you need to let go of the fact that, you know. I raised both. He says, I raised, like, I raised both of you. You were orphans. Well, Your and. brother chose the different path. He, he chose what he chose. Yeah. It's like, you couldn't help it. It wasn't your fault. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's not your fault that he kind of chose this dark path. So anyway, he's like, "Yeah, we're moving to America, and, and I'm not, and I'm not gonna be like I'm giving up." It's like I'm letting go of the shadows or whatever yeah. he says. Um, and then he tells him like, "That's fine, but just like be aware, like you know, it's it's always gonna be there. The shadows. Well, you like you can't get rid of it. Like you're the ninja is you forever. Yeah, but, but like you know, you, you can't tell anybody about this." about how who we are because it's sacred um and he also he tries to get him to take like his sword he says no he's like okay at the very least take, take a helmet this. and he takes it and he's like i'll keep it as a token as like a memory yeah. basically but yeah then then when they're in america and they get like accosted by the well the yeah ruffians like, on the i'm street. walking here and like he like has a quick little flash of like attacking him because it shows him like like doing as a like, ninja like attacking the screen um but he thinks better of it and he's like he's like excuse, excuse me. me sorry and they go to the restaurant it's like this dilapidated restaurant um but they're like gonna clean it up and there's like a locked room and the it's guy's like room. he's like i haven't been in there like my wife used to like um sell cigars out mm -hmm. of there but i haven't opened it since she passed away and he's like, yeah, there's a padlock, but I don't know if I can find the key. It's going to have to be forced open. And, and uh, our guy. And Akira is like, okay. Um, you know, he looks around and then he just pushes it open. 
He's like, whoa, what? You got like, you got some strength, or I can't remember what he says. He, but... must, be, he must be built like an ox. Yeah, and so they go into the cigar room. It's all the old man gets sentimental because his wife and everything it's like a little music box and there's like they go to the other door the outside door because it leads to the outside and they can't open it because there's a padlock and he's like hmm i don't remember putting that there must have done it must uh, my memory must be going mm. and so they go out and they just look around more and then um it's nighttime and two goons pull up so they like unlock the padlock and uh, they go in and there's like these two boards. It's under a rug and there's these two boards and they're going to put like, it's like a box of detergent with a really like highly valuable necklace in there. Um, they never really explain. I get it's just a stolen necklace. It's just like a really high value stolen necklace. Yeah, they necklace. say the name a couple of times, but it's a big deal. Um, also, when the guy walks in there, he cuts his like suit. Yes, on, he like, tears his suit on a, a nail. And, I mean, at the time, I'm just like, you don't really think much of it, but it comes into play. But, yeah, it's like a box of detergent or whatever. So, he's going to put the detergent in, and then he thinks about it, and he takes the box out and pours out the contents, and you see the necklace. And he takes it. And he decides to take it, keep it for himself. So, he puts the he just leaves the floorboards open, and then they leave. And uh, so, the next... Oh, no, sorry. They... They call up the big boss mm-hmm. on the car phone, and they're like, "Yep, we like we dropped off the the goods. You it's can pick, the, you can pick the it usual up. Usual spot. Yep, you can pick it up anytime. It's in the usual spot. And so it shows. It kind of shows them cleaning up. Yeah, because um, they don't know anything is going on in that room. Right? Not yet. So. The other two goons show up to the house, to the the other side of the house to make the pickup, and they don't find anything. Well, first, um, they see a different lock. Oh, that's right. It's like a dial lock. And yeah. They force it open, and they go in, and there's no necklace. Like yeah. the floorboards are still open, and everything like that. And we also get a scene of where Akira's helping the old man, like, pack up all his stuff, put it on top of his car. Because he's sold everything, he sold the place, and he's retiring. And they drive around the... What were they doing? No, they because they watch him, because the guy makes, like, a phone call saying, like, yeah, there's a problem. Stuff's yeah. not there. But he's like, it's probably the old man, he probably has it. So they, they watch him leaving, and they're like, like, who the hell's, who's this, who are these people? He's like, it's probably the new owners, but I bet you that old man is like retiring early on yeah. that on that necklace. And so they f- they follow him. One of them ends up getting in like the passenger seat with the guy and like, you know, they like, drive to like a warehouse and they force the guy out of the car and beat him to death. They beat him up and like, you know, because he, him... he's like saying he doesn't know what the necklace is. He has no idea he was going to go. He's going to retire and you know palm beach or whatever Someplace. yeah and so uh they beat him to death and then they light his car and him on fire and it explodes yeah we get a big old explosion and then they well they're like okay so the old man didn't have the necklace yeah. like it has to be the new own like the new they're owners thinking it's the new owners yeah so they're like, okay, we'll watch the house, and we're going to like basically attack them um, when the opportunity strikes. Yeah, so there's a part where the um, the two kids go to like a convenience store, and... They get jumped by some other kids. They try to steal their bike. Yeah, and so um, Akira's son uh, beats up the kids. He's beating... He's kicking their asses. All while the like kind of the weaker brother, um, he gets kidnapped by one of the goons, by the, our, the our main, main our main our main bad guy basically. And he takes him, and you know the other kid starts chasing him, and he like runs up to him, and he like, punches him in the face, and then like slams the car in, into his body, and we just see like the kid's you know nose is all bloody, and his face is all bloody. So he goes back to um, Akira's house, and uh, he's like, someone took, you know, my brother. Um, I don't know what happened. And then they get a phone call. 
And he's like, meet at the docks at midnight and bring the necklace. He's like, what are you talking about? I have your son. Yeah. Like, I'll I'll trade your son for the necklace. So Akira goes. And he also tells him, like, do not call the cops. Do not tell anybody. Yep. Or else. Just, or else your kid is going to die, basically. Yeah. And so he goes to the docks, um, you know, unarmed and, un, you know, unnecklace uh, because he doesn't have it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he goes down and they chain him up and they like show his kid and the main bad guy's like, okay, well, like, I'm going to like, I'm going to like roast your, your, your son right in front of you. If you don't tell me like where the necklace is and And he's like, I don't have the necklace, but I can tell you that whoever does have the necklace is left-handed and wears a gray suit. Cause he, um, before that, like he, before he goes there, he goes into that cigar room and he sees like and he found the, some clues. The, he sees the open foreboard, and yeah, he sees a little little thread of the suit hanging off the nail. Yeah, so he knows that they're left-handed and um, they wear a gray suit. And the guy's like, "Well, like, why are you joking? Like, come on, like, just give me the necklace." And like, he also he's, cuts him. Yeah, and uh, you know, Akira doesn't show any emotion, no pain. Yeah, and so. Uh, he's about to like barbecue the the kid basically with like a like a like a torch yeah like a handheld and uh so akira like he like escapes the chains just randomly well there's like a there's like oh he kicks the light yeah there's like one light above them so he he, kicks it jumps and kicks it and and they're looking around and he's gone and then with the kid yeah, and then, like, he takes the kid, so they, like, start shooting at him and, like, uh, almost, like, shoot him, but he gets away. Mm-hmm. So then he... Um, the bad guy talks to his... Uh, what's it called? The, like... Bubba? No, it's, like, the crime boss, I guess. Yeah, so the crime boss is, like... Well... He tells him, like, I don't think he has... One, he's, like, why, why do you think he doesn't have it? And it's, like, well, if you involve the kids... Um, usually they give it up like, yeah, like usually they give it up like right away if you involve kids. Yeah. And so he don't think he has it and the crime boss. He says, like, I think it's the two, uh, yeah. the two pigs, the, the two dirty cops. Cause those two that, are, um, it shows cops. them working for this crime yeah. boss. And <clears throat> so he's like, I think it's the two, like one of the two cops and the crime boss is like, well, this Japanese guy has seen too much. He already much. knows too much. Like, you know, Akira's seen too much. So he needs to die. Like send send your guys to kill him. We also get the classic scene of like, you know, where he's like the wife is like tending to his wounds. Oh, and he's angry and he's pissed. Shokasugi has a very good like malice face. Yeah, and he's just pissed, and there's no dialogue. He's just pissed. It's like the most eighties fucking like set scene I've ever seen. And then then he goes <clears> to the <throat> cops. So the cops don't really help. They can't offer him protection because um, no one wants to rat on this guy. On <clears> because it's Linehouse. Too, because it's, yeah, Linehouse or yeah. He just tells him that he lives. It's too dangerous. On the he lives in a boat, and I do mean a giant fucking boat on the docks. And in the same scene, um, the two dirty cops are there. So of course you know they end up calling him, calling like the main boss, and being like, hey, like. He's in here, like, spilling all the beans. Yep. And he tells him, yeah, don't worry. Like, Limehouse will take care of it. Yeah, we'll take care of this. And there's a scene where... Is this where the... So, does the boat attack happen now? Or is it the um, the attack on Akira's house? Pretty sure it's the boat attack first. Oh, you're right. Because then, yeah, because then mm-hmm. Limehouse gets all pissed. Yeah, he uh, <clears throat> the boat attack happens, and actually, <sighs> no, I think Akira. I think the attack on Akira's house happens first. Yeah, because remember, Lionhouse gets pissed and then does what he does yeah. at the hospitals. So. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because uh, <clears throat> so they're like, this is where Bubba. Yeah, so they they hire Bubba and and some other and, bit large gentleman and some other uncle. Um, some other large uncle. Uh, to, there's uh, a lot. So all the goons in this movie are all uncles it's great so the the only martial artist is shokasugi and it makes the fight scenes very awkward which is hilarious 
Because it's just him annihilating uncles. Yeah, they don't really even put up that much of a fight. Most of them get... Most of them just point a gun and then get annihilated. It's like it's like if you play Metal Gear Solid on easy mode and you just <laughs> fucking just see, like, you just see everybody. Just house everyone. Um, but yeah, they're like... You know, he tells them like... He basically tells them like, wash the house or whatever. When he's like, you know, when the opportunity is right, like, kill him, basically. Yeah. And so the one of the sons is kicking a soccer ball and kicks it out of the window and uh, is going to go get the soccer ball. And uh, the mom isn't really watching and neither is. And the other brother is watching, but doesn't really know what to do. Well, once the kid's out there, the mom realizes it when she runs outside to, like, go grab the son and Bubba and the other large uncle floor it, floor it, like ram into them and then drive away. And so everyone's coming and like trying to see like if the wife and the son are okay. And uh, Bubba and the his friend go they switch to, cars. So that yeah, they go see Lionhouse and they're like, hey, like you know, we we attacked the the wife and the did and the kid. And Lionhouse is like, okay, well, go see what's happening. Like, see, make mm-hmm. sure they're dead, basically. And so yeah, um, Akira shows up, and they're loading them into like the ambulance and he sees Bubba and uncle number two pull up and just like they're watching and he knows when he knows because he does the malice face and then Bubba realizes that he knows and so they start driving away and Akira gets in his uh, no Akira chases the he gets in his car yeah he, he gets in his little car and he he like chases them and then like there's like that moment where they fucking, you know, their car stalls and it's like a slasher movie where they're like... <laughs> I just like, like, Shokasugi's like running full sprint at their car and they're like trying to like get desperately like start the car like... <laughs> yeah, like like Jason's coming at you. And then he like, you know, they, they go. I'd be scared too. He catches up. He gets on like the back of their like pickup and then like, you know, kicks out the back window, like starts fighting he one like of them. He like pulls the guy through the window and they start fighting in the truck bed while this car is going like full like bore. <laughs> and then the guy like the driver like takes out his gun and shoots and he hits the fucking uncle number two. Yeah. So then show like jumps out of the uh, out of the truck bed and you just see Bubba react like <gasps> and then like you it's like cra- a grand total of two seconds. <laughs> <You're> like, <gasps> and then he crashes into the fucking <laughs> the, another car and all three of the cars in the scene explode. For no reason. My favorite thing is after they... No reason. It was, how dare you? Bubba's truck, like, lightly... It's a lightly, fucking 80s movie. Bubba's car, truck literally, like, lightly tapped that fucking other car. How dare you? It's a... What is it? A reverse Pinto? Yeah. <laughs> we got... It's just a light tap in the front. And light like tap, boom. boom. And you see, like, the fucking, like, like a fake body... Just on, like, like a barbecuing, barbecuing in, in, the, front in the, seat. the truck bed. It's great. I mean, in the truck uh, cab. And so Sho goes back. He goes to the hospital. Um, and like his wife's apologizing. And he's like, no, I should have been there. I yeah. need to protect you. Um, this will not, you know, I'm not going to let mm. them like kind of do this. So in the meantime, um, Limehouse is on his fucking giant boat. Yeah. celebrating yeah he's like a he's a dock rat but he has a giant boat that he lives in that they make full use of and they our... do because akira just goes from like room to room yeah he gets on the boat with like so it's like one of those um uh, it's like a, a spool for like really big cord yeah um, he, he like he ro- he wraps himself around the middle of it and rolls himself into like two, the two of the uncles, goons. and they're just like, "Huh?" Gets and then out, he, knocks them out. And he then like, it's him going room to room, just fucking jumping around, dispatching all these uncles. There's probably I, like thirty uncles that get owned in this. Just scene. in this one scene, yeah. And so he just like smacks all of them down. All they do. So here's the action scenes. This is all you need to know about these action scenes. It's Uncle Point's gun. Gets an island. Akira <laughs> deflects gun, smacks them down. Yeah, either smacks them down or chokes them or breaks their neck. Yes. And the best part is like when the... Um, My favorite scene, though, is when they're all walking down like the one corridor. And it's just one shot. And you, it's just one shot. And it starts from far away. And you see them <laughs> like four... Walking it's toward like, the camera. So it's four guys... 
and you see one disappear you see show take out one and then another and then another and then the other the, and last, the last guy, guy is like okay let's go and he, he like back turns and... around and then gets annihilated yeah everyone's already fucking dead so um they tell Lionhouse that something's happening, and he's like, oh, they'll handle it, you know, like, whatever. And all the fucking lights go out. And, well, so he looks across the, the boat, and he sees um, Akira, like, flip off this fucking thing as the guy's, like, trying to shoot him. And he's like, okay, you got him. And then all the lights go out. And he's behind him. And, uh, yeah, Akira comes up behind him with a knife, and it's like, if you ever attack the um, Saito family? Yeah. Um, you know, like you're going to pray for death name drop. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, if you ever attack the Saito family, you will pray for death. And then he slashes his chest and then leaves. And the dude's pissed. Oh, he gets so mad. So what he does is he just grabs a knife and then cuts his wrist. And then he's in the hospital next scene. And immediately, you know, exactly. Yeah. He goes, what's going to happen? He goes to the hospital he is being taken care of and he finally gets like his his hand can move yeah and uh he calls a doctor in to give him another like pain shot and then like makes the doctor sleep with the pain shot he puts that bitch to sleep and so he, he gets he dresses up, up as the doctor he dresses up as the doctor goes to the um wife's room and kills the two cops kills the two cops and then proceeds to sexually attack the wife and then and stab her to and death. then kill her and then he's going to go after the the son so he starts wheeling this thing into the son's room he's like it's time for the little boy shots and the cops is just like okay whatever here, here yeah. we go and then um the like lieutenant or captain or whatever shows up there and he's like he's like what well like what some guy is telling him like don't worry nothing can get in here and He's like, the doctor's in there. He's giving the kid a shot. He's like, wait, what? Stop him. And so the cop, you know, tries to stop him. And then uncle on uncle. Yep. Our dude. This dude fucking. Annihilates. Just annihilates everyone. Every cop. Dresses up as a cop and leaves the hospital. They find, you know, that the wife's dead. And, but the son's okay. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, the wife is dead. And Akira is understandably very upset about this. Yeah, he goes there. And he's like, he basically like reprimands the uh, the police chief and is like, you know, you're not going to protect them. Yeah. Like, I have to take matters into my own hands. And the chief is like, if you do this, like, we can't help you. And he's like, like I, I can't care. protect you. And like, you shouldn't take justice into your own hands. He's like, just stay out of my way. He's like, stay out of my way. And so they, you know, they go to like a, and they go to a warehouse because apparently this old man owned, like, not only a restaurant, but, like, an old warehouse. That comes very in handy. Yeah. And uh, so he's keeping the kids safe there. But he is pissed. He's, like, he's coming out of the shadows. He's, he's He breaks the seal. Will. Full ninja. So he's doing this, like, whole, like, ritual with these beads. With, and like, he, hand signs. And he slow-mo pours water all over himself. And then he fucking takes the beads and <clears throat> rips it in half. And rips them in half. <clears throat> and then forges for, a fucking forges sword. his own sword and his own weapons and then is fully decked out in fucking ninja gear and puts the fucking helmet on and i'm like hell yeah but also don't... before this um well yeah i was gonna say like we get this scene but this scene happens after the um Cause remember he talks to, like the wife's body yeah and then he tells her like i you know i i wanted you to be happy like i didn't i wanted yeah. you to follow your dreams but now like i have to come out of the shadows yes and his son listens in and his son realizes well yeah so his son Dad's knows. a fucking yeah. ninja. well and his son also is watching him like forge the sword his son's also making something of his own will yep a little like contraption <laughs> um and we don't know what it is until until we do well until the scene so it's not the next scene mm -hmm. the next scene is we see the fucking dirty cop they're in they're an having, Italian restaurant having spaghetti, and and, <laughs> <laughs> and so we see the guy. He slides over a crown royal bag with the necklace, and then the other guy pushes with a, his foot a briefcase, a full, briefcase of full of money. And they're like happy. 
And he's like, oh, yeah. And then they're like, they're sitting down for food. And our like linehouse, the bad guy comes in and just fucking starts mowing everyone down and even kills like the waitress and everyone. So because he's a bad guy. You see slow-mo like bullet squibs, slow-mo like bowls of spaghetti exploding. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's like a waitress and he, you know, murders her too. And so yeah, and that happens, and then um, I can't. Oh, they're back at the dr the drug lords, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the big the mob boss's house, and one of the cops is like, "Well, I know the old man had a warehouse. Like, we should go investigate that and see if they're there because so they send they send like half of them to yeah. investigate that. So in in that part, they go there, and the kid is riding a bicycle." And they start, like, chasing him, and you find out that his bike has a little smoke contraption on the back. It's, like, a very uh, cheap, if you've ever seen Lone Wolf and Cub. It's, yes. It's, like, the cart, the baby cart, but, but like... a bicycle. But a bicycle and not as, like, violent. No. Um, <laughs> the, 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 uh, all the, all, I guess... Because it has a smoke screen. It has, um, like, stuff that, like, spokes that, like, stick out and, like, trip people. There's a... He has an arrow, like a dart. Yeah, remember? and there's also like a slingshot attached to the front of his bike that he like. Oh yeah, hit, he hits a person in the nuts hits with. A person in the fucking... <laughs> it's reminds me of like Power Rangers or something, but like, yeah, he has that. He also like has a contraption that comes off and it's nunchucks because mm -hmm. he beats up two grown men with them. Yeah, he has the two spokes, and then, um, in while this while he while the kid beats up the adult uncles the uh we get akira infiltrating the mob boss's house using all of the ninja things he like he flips over the main gate and then he like just slashes both the fucking guards slashes in the front. throats uh th throwing stars fucking bow and um, arrow bow and arrow smoke he bombs uses smoke bombs he uses every ninja trick he in the uses, book like pocket sand <laughs> like, yeah he uses pocket sand and these weird like fold out like huge throwing stars yeah he they're uses... like giant like they're like the big fucking like nails yeah the so um limehouse while this is happening he basically runs away and the main like big boss he gets one of the fucking big throwing stars through his throat mm -hmm. kills him and then you know Akira chases after Linehouse. Well, Linehouse tries to run him over. Uh, Akira like jumps over his car and does all this flippy shit. And then he goes under it, and he basically rides under his car until he gets. I guess he gets tired of being under there, and he like you know he like attacks. They him. have like a little fight, in, like while like Linehouse is driving the car, and then um, Akira gets knocked off. And uh, Linehouse drives away. But he's driving to the warehouse. But he knows exactly where he's going, yeah. So, like, Linehouse is going to finish the job. He's like, fine, I'm going to kill those fucking kids. <laughs> like, I'm fucking done. I'm done with this shit. Yeah, he gets there and he starts, like, trying to break in the door with, like, a an axe. An axe. And there just happens to be four uncles there. And, they, you know, Akira shows up, annihilates them. Fucking kills every single one of them. And then we just get, like, an absolute... It's like this, it's like this knockout drag out fight between Linehouse and uh, where Kira. they're just like covered in fucking blood. Like well, they're just both punching each other, cutting each other, and then uh, finally, um, Akira gets like a he, he gets like a wooden stake through his knee. Yeah, and it's like you know, const like Linehouse is constantly hitting it. Well, and he does cut Linehouse a little bit. Um, and then they go into a mannequin room. Yeah, there's like a back and forth there. And there's like a cat and mouse game in the fucking mannequin room. Uh, Akira like he keeps having flashbacks of his like his sensei saying you need to let go of the past. Yeah. Like you need to let it go. And then he finally takes the spoke out and like ties a thing around his like thigh, a tourniquet. Then they go to a saw room. And so Linehouse tries to saw him in half with a giant fucking saw. He wiggles the tourniquet a little bit, and then uh, you get like a "you have to let go of the past." Well, no, you get like a quick scene of like that, and like his family, like quickly, like yeah, like, the and wife, so like two kids, like he finally fucking realizes all the shit like, that they took from you, and 
So he like gets the he one up on his on his helmet, his ninja helmet. There's a ninja star right at the front. So he takes it and he stabs Lionel. No, he takes it and he throws it. Oh, that's right, into the fucking saw and Stop stops it. it. And uh, then he gets a one up on Lionel, so that he beats him the fuck up, and then like uh, finally like punches him down onto like a log. And he takes like two like he well, it's like nunchucks, but they have like daggers at the end yeah. of it. And he stabs it like uh, Lionel's uh, hands into this log. And then he also stabs his legs too. Yeah, he stabs his legs into it too, and so Lionel is like stuck to this log. And then he goes over and he and takes, he takes out takes, the ninja star. Well, like he looks at Lionel and like Lionel is like, "Just kill me, <laughs> just kill me!" And then he takes out the ninja star, and you just like slowly see Lionel like going towards the saw, and he's like, "Please, please, just kill me, please, just kill me." <laughs> And then like it doesn't show it shows like a silhouette. There's no blood, yeah. but it shows a silhouette. And you, I mean, you know what happens. Yeah. He gets sawed in half. And then, you know, they're at the. It's like next day. They're at they're the, grave the grave of the site. mom. And uh, the police chief comes up and is like, "Hey, so I don't like this gang on gang violence is just too it's wacky, bro." Like he tells them, "Like yeah, everyone's dead." Like and there's a rumor that a ninja. You you wouldn't know anything about that, right? And then the son comes up and he's like. You've been watching too many ninja movies. He's like, yeah, you're probably right. He's like, but, you know, I'll tell you this. Like, if you see that ninja, tell him to, like, stay away from here. Yeah, he and gives he, like, him a... gives him the ninja star. Because he knows. He knows. He knows what happened. And so just, yep, yeah, just pans up, and that's the movie. That's the film. Like, okay, listen. Would this movie have been better if all the stunt actors were like actual martial artists and not fucking uncles yes but you know but there's a certain joy there it is endearing i mean i i enjoyed all the uncles getting absolutely fucking wrecked the boat none scene, of them even stood a chance the boat scene where it, it felt like like a metal gear solid gameplay of just like him bouncing around, like the, parkouring through this like cramped boat, just annihilating uncles. The only person that really hurt him is the main bad guy at the end. Yeah, that's the only person that even remotely hurt him. No one else even grazed him. Not even close. Not even the big mob boss. The only other person who hurt him is in the flashback. His brother. Well, yeah, because he was a ninja as well, you know. So it's like makes sense. That's it. But. Yeah, it's like these uncles don't stand a chance. So it was entertaining in that fact. Could it have been in a better action movie? Yes, but for what we got, highly entertaining. And there is a lot. And I mean, it's good to see like it is like probably like a low budget like studio right. film. Um, so they couldn't do a lot. They had the enough budget for like the set pieces and the film on location, which was nice. Yeah. Um, because we don't see them filming it in a garage or Thank like fucking fucking Christ. like just in a random wooded area that's too dark to see fucking anything so you know <laughs> i do not need <laughs> so so at least there was lighting and set and like you know a, a setup um so it's refreshing to see like an actual movie also an actual movie with you know coherent storytelling well the cinematography was good i mean the camera work is pretty decent it wasn't like the flashiest but mm -hmm. it worked um it wasn't like still shots all the time thank um, god thank god because the camera did move around and do stuff so i mean there's there's a lot to like here it's, yeah. it's, it's very entertaining it doesn't waste your time it gets right into the action there's um, a lot of it there's a lot of it there's like a it's like your typical action movie there's not much plot but there doesn't need to be the villain is despicable. Yeah, the villain is evil as shit. And, uh, That's you know, what you want. You want him to see his comeuppance. Yeah. So for what it was, I would say it's very entertaining and way better than the last two movies we've watched. What was so the much better. What was uh, Galaxy Invader? It was uh, fucking hell. Was it the Whip movie? Yeah. Oh, I'm God. pretty sure. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Listen, oh. I enjoy it for that, just the whip part, but like... No, 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 listen, if you just take a screenshot of the two movies and stack, and you just if know... If you stack it against this one, this one is like such a... Actual film, yeah. yeah. 
yeah, no, there is no fucking comparison to, like, an actual movie that doesn't waste your fucking time you and can't. actually splits up the action throughout the movie. Do you even know how to use that thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking whip. You're not ready for this. You're not ready for this. Huh? <laughs> you waited a thousand years for this. I'm gonna send you right back. <laughs> God. I cannot. Yeah, the Dark Power was the other one we watched. Yeah, the Toltec Boogie. <laughs> um. So yeah, compared to if you stack it up against those two movies, listen, holy, holy shit! No, if you stack it up against those, this is like fucking Enter the Dragon. And then before that was the Strangeness, garbage. So we've had three in a row that are just like meh. Yeah, and then this one finally. Finally, there's something watchable and entertaining. An actual movie. I mean, uh, I mean, let's be honest. Like the Dark Power, the ending was fucking insane. Um, but that's the only reason to watch it. I mean, honestly, yeah, I will say that the Dark Power is better than the. Uh, it's like a. San- it's like the Dark Power is like a sandwich where the middle is like you know day old turkey, but the bread is fucking moldy. It's moldy fucking dick cheese bread. That's what that, like, those three movies are. And then before that was the request of Blue Sunshine. So, when, listen. You know, well. So what, I'll take, I'll take this over the last four movies we've had to watch, okay? I will, I, I will sing this movie's praises because it at, at least, least this movie, unlike Blue Sunshine. Um, actually has a conclusion. Actually ended, yeah. A proper, like, satisfying ending. And I would say the acting's pretty good. Um, I mean, everything's good. I mean, it's just a serviceable B-movie. That's... Yeah. It's the, it's nothing exciting, I know, but, like, it's, it's good. If you're a proper lizard like us... And you like seeing uncles get fucking owned, <laughs> this is your movie. Because that's all that happened. The uncle the casting call was large. For yeah, they baby. didn't use like any martial artists. It's all uncles. Shokatsugi is the only fucking one. Yeah, it's just, and um, he does lots of flips in this. There are lots, many flips. Lots and lots and lots of flips. Lots of flips and just, un- just a trail like fifty <laughs> plus dead uncles. Yep, just fucking dead uncles everywhere. Dude at the end is like, I know you're a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, be like, listen. You're a serial killer, but you kind of helped us get rid of a mob, so we're good. Like, you literally murdered more people than any serial killer in the history of this country, but yeah. um, it's and fine. Yeah, they and they all happened to be uncles. He had, a, he had an M.O. He, uh, only, he only kills uncles. Every serial killer does, Will. And yep. In this case, it was uncles. <laughs> uncles. But uncles uncles that, in suits. But uncles that, that, that murdered his family. It's true. Or helped murder his family. They all wear suits, too. Okay. They all wear suits or sweaters. They're all like very, you know, nicely they're, dressed uncles. They're very dapper uncles that get <laughs> they get fucking obliterated by a ninja. Well, they stand no chance. What else do you need to see in this world? <laughs> they're really. I mean, what else do we need to even say about the movie? Um, that's literally all that happens. Um, so yeah, <laughs> shitty to pretty. Finally, we can rate a, a decent rating. I, I'll give it an eight. I think an eight is fair. I think it's there. I, I wanted to get it as a, a seven, but like, it's just because like the action, I, I, it's just too nitpicky to say the action scenes could have been better. Like it's too nitpicky because I, I, again, it's like, it's a B movie. What did I really expect? It's a B movie full of uncles. Yeah. It's like, I wish I wish there was another martial artist so we could have gotten like a cooler fight scene rather than just fucking people getting like annihilated owned, owned immediately cuz it would have been nice to see like some like other than the end fight scene there's no like big fight yeah right so that's the only one so we get the fight with the brother and the fight with the bad guy mm-hmm. that's the only like big fights we see Every other one is just him dispatching fucking uncles like like it's like it's no biggie like it's a fucking cakewalk easy. Um, so <laughs> if I'm being nitpicky, I wish there was more like cooler fights. 
Yeah. But that's just too nitpicky. Um, so I'm going to give it an eight as well. Yeah. I mean, if there was that, it would easily push it up to like a nine or a 10. I mean, if there was like some, I just want, I just like batshit fight scenes. If there was some batshit insane, like final ninja on ninja fight, it might push it up to like a 10. Um, cause we have seen that before yeah, where but it's as like it they stands, do like some crazy yeah. ninja shit at the end. But as it stands, like eight is, uh, you know, very respectable. Like this is no like fight against a mystical ninja that you're not going to win. Against. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's that ninja. The elemental yeah. You don't ninjas? have a chance. Yeah. You're you, owned. <laughs> oh, it's the elemental ninjas. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a chance. That's the speech they would have given to the uncles in this movie. Yeah. Oh, it's the ninja. No. Oh, oh, it's just one, one black ninja. No. You don't, yeah, it's not a chance. You have guns, doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You'll point him, but you'll never be able to fire him. Even if you fire them, he's... Oh, we forgot to mention his thing is bulletproof. Oh, yeah, his his suit is bulletproof, except for the legs. Which is fine, just grazed. Yep. Everything else, completely bulletproof. And the they helmet, found that out. the chest, the, the, the arm guards, bulletproof. everything bulletproof. Uncles, no chance. Yep. Yeah, so uh, that's Pray for Death. Pretty cool. Like, you just a little hor- uh, horror movie. B action movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We watched many horror movies. Yeah, before. sorry. I it, It's been too many. It's like fucking like, like four really horrible horror movies. <laughs> and now finally we get an action movie. So, um, <laughs> excuse me if the brain has to unsmooth a little bit. Um, well, you know, it might re-smooth. I think it might with it because um, the next one's a suggestion. I mean, look, I we go into everything completely open, and one of you lucky ducks, your suggestion. <sighs> I did look at this movie when we were in that year. The title alone, dude. You'll see next time. I'm not going to reveal it, but like, no spoilers, um, dude. But I just I wasn't sure at the time, and I was just like, I don't know. I'm not sure now. But you requested it, and. It is available to view now, so I have no choice. Great. Of course, I mean, I could always make an executive decision and veto it, but in this case, We're not. I won't. The because... only the only thing we will veto is probably like hee-haw shit. Well, hee-haw, you know, or like... If it's like, it's a, if it's like a spoof movie kind of thing. Or if it's like, obviously, if it's just straight up not an action or like horror a, movie. Like a comedy or something Or drama. Like that. Yeah. Or, like, I don't know, a crime film, but... Yeah, so that's the other thing with, like, if you're new and if you enjoy it, this review, if you do want to make a suggestion... The lines are open, being... we The lines are open, and we do horror and action movies. As long as it's in the... But they have to be low-rated. Um, which, there's some wiggle room because cult movies are a thing. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, if there's a cult following, but it has to be, like, a, a kind of a lesser-known movie... At the very we least, we don't do like blockbusters, is what I'm saying. I'll add an addendum because we have done like popular movies, but they are movies that, even if they are financially successful, they are critically disliked. We did do one of the Friday the Thirteenth, even. Yeah, so. we've done like slashers, and I mean those made fucking boatloads of money. Yeah. Um, and if there is like a, I mean, here's the thing: in future years, we will have like big budget blockbuster well, yeah. fucking failures on here yeah absolutely i'm not super excited but the They'll word be there the word bad is very all-encompassing yeah baby what i'm saying what is i'm just, saying is no put, godfather <laughs> yeah put in your suggestions no like relatively like everyone thinks it's a good movie, like we're basically. not gonna watch a john woo movie on no. here okay or like a fucking mission impossible like you know, or like a Kurosawa film, you know, we're yeah, not like, going to watch that shit. You know, the fucking Exorcist or like a great movie. No, but something. But if you, I, I mean, it? most of our suggestions are people wanting us to suffer. So like you can follow that trend. Um, and also if it's in the year after where we are, don't worry. It's it's added. Um, so yeah, don't worry. We are looking at that. Just comment on any of the videos, really. Comment. There's on this one movie one. from this year, '85, that one of you recommended several months ago, and I assure you, it's coming. I don't know how I feel about it, but uh, it's coming. You know who you are, and uh, yeah, I think you might be a boob man because of this recommendation. But it's fine. I'll well, give it to you. We'll get to it. 
and uh, we promise we'll get to all the suggestions eventually. Yes. Every five episodes, though. So next one is going to be a suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's all I have to say. That's it. Um, wait until next time to see what it is. Yes. For they mostly come out at night. This has been Will. This has been Alex. And we will talk to you all later. Bye. Bye. Back to the shadow. Back to the shadow. <laughs>